Hello and welcome to another episode of What Happened, the show where we get down and or dirty with the video games, movies, or whatevers that suffered through many stumbles in their long road to becoming things. And today's topic, brought to us by Flophouse Big Boss Jason, certainly suffered through said stumbles. Now to most, The Legend of Heroes sounds like a title spewed through a generic name generator, but the JRPG series, known more commonly as Trails or Kiseki in Japan is anything but generic. While it leans into a lot of tropes from role-playing classics of the 90s and early 2000s, it makes it a point to truly embrace its storytelling. Because while many RPGs certainly can be wordy, Trails takes that concept to hitherto unheard of extremes, with many scripts often reaching into the millions and millions of lines of Japanese text. Now, the studio behind the series, Nihon Falcom, developed three games that made up a specific story arc called The Trails in the Sky, without any real issues, as most of the games took only roughly two years to make each. The first, The Legend of Heroes Trails in the Sky, released for Windows in Japan back in 2004, with a subsequent release on the PSP in 2006. It was then followed by the second chapter, its direct sequel sequel before finishing up with Trails in the Sky the Third, which, while connected to the universe, wasn't integral to the grander plot. Even though Nihon Falcom was not a big player within the Japanese game industry, the quality of the games and their detailed worlds won over a lot of people, building up a fanbase through strong word of mouth. Eventually, this word of mouth reached western shores, and that's when Falcom started to see potential in releasing the game in other territories. And it's here where our story starts. It's not about Falcom being crushed by a deadline or having a bigger publisher overmanage their work. It's about the Herculean, twisty, stress-filled, and near-tragic tale about the localization. As alluded to before, Western gamers started to become aware of the Trails in the Sky games in the later half of the 2000s, which happened to be around the same time many small localization studios started popping up, with names like Rising Star Games and Ignition Entertainment. The most famous of all though, and the main player of our story, is Exceed, which I assume you're all familiar with. Now, amongst all these companies, the Trails games were seen as something of a prestigious series to land, far too small to be bothered with by the likes of Square or Level 5, but big enough to be a hit overseas. Fortunately, Falcom was interested in expanding to other markets, so when Exceed came calling, it was a match made in heaven before it became a match made in hell. It was all based on the best of intentions though. The problem came when Exceed actually realized the amount of work that they had signed up for. Their previous localization were things like Wild Arms, Fragile Dreams, Farewell Ruins of the Moon, and Juan the Grudge, the Haunted House Simulator, none of which properly prepared them for trails. For those not aware, unlike most RPGs that have shopkeepers or passerbys that say things like this, well, trails isn't like that at all. Every single character, ranging from the lowliest peasant to the mightiest pharaoh, or in this case king, has their own distinct personality, history, and dozens and dozens of lines of dialogue in addition to the main storyline. The sheer girth of the script was intimidating to say the least, but Exceed had firmly committed themselves. Thus, it became 14-hour workdays for six days a week for almost a year, translating the raw Japanese Japanese texts, with the majority of it being handled by Exceed's editor, Jessica Chavez. Then, in March of 2011, Trails in the Sky was released exclusively on the PSP in North America, and hardcore fans of JRPGs rejoiced the world over. They would now be able to experience this little wonder of a game, their prayers having finally been answered. And nobody bought it. There's a couple of reasons for this. One, while the PSP was quite the beast in Japan with RPGs coming out for it 
attacked almost daily, the same could not be said for the rest of the world. By 2011, its North American and European game lineup had been steadily shrinking, and Sony themselves stopped supporting the handheld with major first-party games around this time. So, being locked on a declining piece of hardware in the West no doubt hurt its sales. The second factor for the no success had many pointing to the game's main title, The Legend of Heroes, and its shocking, wondrous banality. Both Exceed and Falcom were devastated by this, as the amount of fervor around the series from Western fans seemed to indicate it would be a smash, and considering all the work and time that had gone to the localization, it was pretty demoralizing. It made both companies question whether bringing over more games after that was even worth it, and was a very real possibility that Trails could have remained locked in Japan from then on out. The only reason it didn't was the fact that Second Chapter was a sequel in the strictest sense, being a direct continuation after an ending that can only be described as dangling off the edge of some type of mountain. After remaining mum for several months, fans started asking Exceed about plans to localize Second Chapter, which was fair, because in Exceed's initial announcement of their partnership with Falcom, they stated outright that they planned to bring all three games to the West. <laughs> In an interview with Kotaku, Exceed Vice President Ken Barry relayed a situation that is all too common nowadays. Any announcement we made on our Facebook page, almost always the first post replied to it is, Where's Trails SC? No matter what we talk about, the first post is always, Where's Trails SC? While the fan desire was there, the actual realities of bringing it over were too sobering. Not only was their data backing up the fact that the Trails fanbase was just too small, if Exceed did commit 10 more months to bring out second chapter, that wouldn't leave enough staff to localize any other potentially far more profitable games. Wait, did I, did, did I say 10 more months? Yeah, that would be true if it wasn't for the little detail that second chapter was twice the length of its predecessor. To put it in perspective, the script dwarfed, see what I did there, all three Lord of the Rings books combined, and screw it, probably the Cimmerillion too. It would take far longer to localize this particular game, so it was a massive of gamble Exceed wasn't ready to take, and that's when fate smiled or maybe frowned upon the situation. This was because they were then approached by a smaller studio called Carpe Fulgur, who offered to assist Exceed in any of their upcoming localization projects. And wouldn't you know it, they just so happen to have one! Thus, they would grab the reins of Second Chapter's localization, which, just to clarify, would encompass both translating the raw text and then editing it to give it more life and nuance. The translations would be handled by Robin Light Williams, while Andrew Dice would do the editing. These two partners made up Carpe Fulgur. Falcom, however, was hesitant about Second Chapter, as they were still so distraught over the last game's commercial failure. Exceed still needed them to provide programmers to get the translated text into the game's PSP source code, and even worse, Falcom wasn't interested in any other ports. Exceed was insistent that they absolutely needed a Western PC release, because by the time Second Chapter would come out, the PSP would be even more dead than the dead that it already was in the West. At the end of the day, the two studios compromised with an informal verbal deal, as Falcom were simply too cautious to commit to a written contract. Carpe Fulger started work, under the assumption that Falcom would officially sign on the dotted line eventually, and things went relatively smoothly for the first few months. In that same Kotaku article I mentioned earlier, DICE recalled this fleeting period when things were going okay. At the time, I didn't think it would take very long for Falcom to see the light and to sign off on doing Trails in the Sky for PC. It was the only real way Trails was going to make money. I had faith that we'd get that sorted out maybe within a year. 
More than two years later, around June of 2013, things weren't any better, and in fact, in many ways, they were even worse. Falcom still hadn't negotiated a contract with Exceed, and Carpe Fulger still hadn't finished their work. Progress had slowed down dramatically the longer they went without a signed deal, and Andrew Dice explained that everyone was worried that Falcom would just pull out of the project altogether, sowing the seeds of doubt that all this translation work would ever see the light of day. The uncertainty had been eating at us and prevented us from getting anything done. It had been in a state of limbo for two years, and we legitimately didn't know if it was going to happen. Fortunately, Exceed's unexpected commercial success with Falcom's own Yeast 1 and 2 Chronicles on the PC showed the Japanese company that the market was viable. This was then the impetus for them to finally negotiate an official contract for a second chapter. With all the business now out of the way, they made the announcement public. Trails would continue on both the PSP and PC in the summer of 2014, and everything was going to be just fine. Fine. Andrew Dice then started sending over completed files to Exceed, and that's when they realized that thousands upon thousands of lines of translated work was in the wrong file format. Dice had sent everything in normal text files instead of it being in a spreadsheet, the industry standard, which resulted in Exceed's editor, Jessica Chavez, to have to copy and paste every single line into the proper spreadsheet for about two whole months. Dice, for his part, made no excuses. He simply didn't double check to make sure it was the right format. But fortunately, they had completed the main storyline. But since this is trails we're talking about, the main storyline only encompassed 50% of the script. Everything else, the menus, item descriptions, and non-essential NPCs, each with their own side stories, were still not done. The problems kept piling up. Jessica Chavez noticed that Carpe Fulger had not adhered to the same terminology and naming conventions Exceed had established with the first game, leading to hundreds of inconsistencies. Now in the 90s, stuff like that was fairly common, but Exceed found it completely unacceptable, especially since second chapter took place within the same world. Thus, every single line needed to be checked and edited again. Dyson Williams were, as you can imagine, distraught by all these mistakes. While Falcom had certainly dragged their feet and had delayed things in their own way, second chapter now had an officially announced release date, so the pressure wasn't going to go anywhere but up. These delays put a concrete strain on the relationship between both localization companies, and as the months crept into 2014, DICE started ignoring Exceed's emails, demanding progress updates. The anxiety kept building up over the weight of having to deliver the rest of the work in just a few more months, with his fledgling company's reputation on the line. He was massively behind on his editing, and coupled with the mistakes he had already made, he spiraled into a deep depression. Then, in March of 2014, DICE left Williams a note in his doorframe, they lived in the same complex, and then returned to his apartment with the intent to end his own life. Fortunately, Robin found the note in time and rushed to save his friend. They spoke at length, and fortunately, Andrew changed his mind that day. However, the enormity of the work left to do was simply too much, and for Andrew's own mental health, he decided to end the deal with Exceed and to step away from the project. They sent over the remainder of what they had done, and by that point, 100% of the script had been translated, but only 50% had been edited. Jessica Chavez then took over, as Exceed simply didn't have the time to farm it out to anyone else. She crunched every day for another nine months, and by the start of 2015, had finished her final checks. Then, the game needed to be actually tested. While not nearly as detrimental to the experience as crashes or falling out of world, bug testing for text, especially this damn much of it, presents its own unique issues. Getting cut off, truncated, stretching to enormous size for no reason, any number of things can affect the words you see on a screen, and vice versa. 
and to properly test all of it, it took a further six months. While Exceed could handle the PC version on their own, Falcom were solely responsible for the PSP, and because of the difference in time zones, it made constant communication and build checks particularly demanding and, shockingly, very slow. They were already a year behind schedule in the summer of 2015, and inconsistencies were still being found within the text. But eventually, Exceed were forced to put their foot down. We just had to set a firm date. We said, okay, after this date, that that's it. No more text changes. No more addressing of any bugs unless it's something that's very major. We need to get this product out. Not just for the fans that are waiting, but for our own sanity. Thus, on October 29th, 2015, five years after Exceed proclaimed they're bringing the games westward, second chapter released on Steam and PSP. In the Kotaku article, just before that fateful day, Andrew Dice said, For everything that happened over the years, I'm still enormously proud of the work I did on Trails in the Sky second chapter. Second chapter has had more twists and turns getting out the door than just about any title I've heard of. But the game is still going to come out, and it's going to be great fun, and it's going to leave a lot of people satisfied. And fortunately, it did. The fan reception to second chapter was overall very positive, and this finally equated to stronger sales, and since then tons of Trails RPGs have made their way over, complete with English voice acting. And while Exceed stopped publishing them in 2017, NIS America took over. With Trails of Cold Steel 4 a few days away from releasing on the Switch and PC on April 9th. Over in Japan, Falcom released the 10th game in the series, Hajimari no Kiseki, in the summer of 2010, and have since unveiled the new game in the series running on a fresh engine. So, fortunately, despite all the stress, delays, and heartache the localization process went through, these legends are going to continue to be told all over the world. Alright, that felt like about a million words that did that. No. Oh. Oh, that's not even close. Wow. Thanks again to Jason for nominating this unique subject. If you know of any other arduous RPG adventures, let me know in the comments below or head on over to the Flophouse VIP Patreon and become a big boss to bestow me with a future quest. See you next time and thanks for watching. Oh,